Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, another week, another roundup. We've got some history, we've got some updates for Power BI, along with some updates from the community. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Matthew Roach has got a blog post looking at the virtues of business intelligence. And if you know anything about Matthew, you know that he likes swords and combat, and he's tying that love of sword fighting in with his love for business intelligence, throwing in a little history from the late 1300s to early 1400s, and wrapping that into how does this relate to business intelligence? I'm really into history, and I love this take on wrapping that into business intelligence and how you can take something from that long ago and apply it to something today, and it has a lot of meaning. So if you're curious about how Matthew incorporated this history into business intelligence, and you're curious what the virtues are for business intelligence, I'll give you a hint, there's four of them, check out the blog post, links down below. Gil Revive's got a blog post and he's looking to start a new series about bad practices with Power BI. And he's starting off this series with looking at pie charts and comparing pie charts to other visualizations, namely bar charts, and also looking at tree maps as well. This is interesting. I know there's usually a lot of discussion around pie charts, whether you should use them, whether you shouldn't. There's a lot of arguments both ways. I think generally the idea is most people want to use them, but you probably shouldn't. Although I try to avoid the word never, and you know, there's always gonna be a place in time. But this is a great blog post looking at the pie chart and reasons why you maybe don't wanna use it and why it could be a bad practice in your reports. I thought Gil did a great job in this blog post. Check it out, links down below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, so go check it out. John White's got a blog post which looks at an announcement that happened this last week, which is the fact that Microsoft Flow can now actually refresh a Power BI data set. So there's an action in there for Power BI to refresh that data set. John walks through and shows you how you can actually use something like a SharePoint list. And when an entry is added to that SharePoint list, Flow will actually kick off the refresh of your Power BI data set to get the latest and greatest. I'll also be doing a video on this, not with a SharePoint list, but with something else. So that'll drop on Thursday. So be sure to check that out when it lands. I'll have a link to John's blog post down in the links below, as well as a link to the actual blog announcement that you can check out both of those to figure out how you can actually do this. There are new PowerShell commandlets for the on-premises data gateway. If you're familiar with some of the history here, there were some PowerShell commandlets that you could use previously, but this is a new set of PowerShell commandlets. They've been updated, overhauled, and allow you to manage both the gateway and the data sources that are associated with your gateway. The blog post goes through and shows you how you can install those PowerShell commandlets and also which commands are available for you. It also knows that there will be updates coming along the way. And also there was an interesting note at the bottom of the blog that says you can also use Azure Data Studio in combination with the PowerShell commandlets if you want. So that's kind of interesting. I'll need to check that out. But if you're using the on-premises data gateway and you wanna be able to manage this from an automated perspective, check out this blog post, download those commandlets and check out to see if they're gonna help you in your operations journey. It's that time of the month. We got an update for Power BI Desktop. This is the October 2019 release and there was some good stuff inside of it. The first item that I saw a lot of buzz on is the fact that you can do automated page refresh. This is specific to if you're using a direct query connection. And so the idea here is that the actual page will recycle every whatever interval you decide, and that will update, get the latest from the direct query source and show you in that page report. So this avoids you from having to actually hit the refresh button in the browser. There's a couple limitations with this. If you're not in premium, the minimum interval you can have is 30 minutes. If you're in a premium capacity, the capacity admin can define what that smallest duration is. And also know that when you do this, it does put load on the backend data source, so be careful with that. Another big item that was in this update was a lot of things around the Q&A visual. I did a video with Justina about this. You can check that above. I'll have a link down in the description below as well. But there are a lot of things with that Q&A visual that make it way more compelling now to use Q&A with your reports. This includes a feedback mechanism where you can adjust and tune so that the results for those answers are correct. And they're also interactive now. So it's a very cool update that you should definitely check out. The other big thing that I saw that I need to spend more time with is the query diagnostics as part of Power Query. So this will allow you to see what all of those steps are and the durations 
for what Power Query is actually doing with inside of Power BI Desktop, so that's pretty cool. There were other updates in this release. Be sure you've updated to the latest Power BI Desktop release. This is the October 2019 version, and go to town. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know down in the comments below. I wanna hear it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.